So folks, today, using one of these and one of these, I'm gonna plot out the ultimate diet and exercise regime for you. Here we go. Right, so first things first we've got to do is touch on mindset. Before we even look at your activity, before we even look at your diet, we need to look at where you're coming from. So what is your motivator? Now I'm not talking about, oh I've got a holiday and I want to look lovely on the beach, or I've got a wedding coming up. We're talking about the proper motivators, the things that really drive you. Because let me promise you, looking good in that on the beach is all very well and good in the short term, but in the long term, you need something more powerful than that. Seeing your kids walk down the aisle, or uh, seeing something with your family, or getting to a certain event, or being fit enough to do something, be it run around with your children, that kind of thing. What is the true motivator of you doing this? This could be something even more psychological. It could be the fact of you feel shit about yourself, so you want to feel better about yourself, that you want to achieve something, you want to prove to yourself you want to achieve something. It could be any one of these things. So first things first, what is your motivator? Why the fuck are you doing this in the first place? Why have you made this decision? Because it's that guy that in your darkest hour is going to be the most important thing. The next thing you've got to consider is what's going on right now? Have you got a lot going on? Is there craziness going on in the family? Are you busy at work? Have you got numerous different stresses and strains going on? Because let me tell you, if you've got a lot of this stuff going on, prime example with myself, when I was growing my business, I was not in the right frame of mind to do a diet because I've got too many eggs in too many baskets. My focus is elsewhere. My priorities are elsewhere, not with myself. And therefore, if I tried to diet while I'm looking after the business, and believe me, I tried, it didn't work because my focus wasn't there. I was plowing too much into everything else. So what's going on with you right now? What kind of stresses and strains and things that are pulling your focus away from this? And finally, the thing that everyone tends to overlook when it comes to dieting is finances. Getting good cuts of protein, getting good food, getting and preparing snacks and or making good choices when you're out and about costs money. It's all very well and good to wander into Tesco's Express and get a meal deal, but let's face it, it's probably not going to be the best choice for you because the calories are going to be quite high and therefore you're going to want to choose something maybe more expensive and that's where the money side of thing comes in. So before you even look at your activity, look at your nutrition, you've got to consider where your mind is. Are you ready to do this? Are you ready to give it your all? Because if you are, you'll see success. But if this is wrong, you might as well stop this video and come back to it at a later stage. And so, moving on to exercise and activity. Now, I've not put it at number two because it's more important than nutrition. Arguably, you get more bang for your buck with nutrition. But I want to touch on that last. So, exercise and activity. What do I mean? Exercise is specific exercise. Specific time slots that you're going to be doing something exercise related. A workout, for example. Activity is what I tend to class as what you do day to day, just general movement. So I'm going to take this from my own perspective, obviously do it for yourself, uh, for your own specific parameters and needs, etc. So the first question you need to ask yourself is what do you enjoy? What are the, your favourite things that involve physical movement that you enjoy? So for me, they are a walk, I enjoy walking, I enjoy weights, and I enjoy intervals, not so much in the sense of the long distance cardio, but I quite like intervals and sprints, etc. And I enjoy general day-to-day -day activities such as golf, maybe down the pitch and park, maybe a bit of crazy golf, that kind of thing. So, and hiking. So, now I've got the things that I enjoy down, you may be thinking we're gonna to jump to, okay, let's do the things we don't enjoy. But what's the point? You don't need to do that. We know what you enjoy. So, putting together a program of this, we need to look at how often are you able to exercise? How often are you able to do these certain things? So, for example, I know that in my specific time frame at the moment, I can probably do a weights workout about four times in the space of a week. So, weights four times a week. Hiking can be an ad hoc, so maybe once a week, so you know, out with the kids, maybe take the dogs out, go and have a wander, that kind of thing. Golf, again, maybe once, once a week, that kind of thing. These are kind of optional activities. Uh, walks, what can I do? Well, realistically, walks do take up a lot of time because it's a long exercise 
and it's pretty low intensity. So you've got to do it for a long period of time as my previous video suggested. So probably walks, and realistically, I could probably do maybe two to three, no more than that with the kind of lifestyle that I'm accustomed to and the kind of time that I've got available. And then we've got intervals. Realistically, I could fit intervals in probably once a week. Purely because I want to prioritize the weight side of things because I actually enjoy that guy more but I do need to put these in to improve my cardiovascular fitness and to burn a few more calories. And there we go. There is my general, very vague obviously, activity and exercise regime for the week. I'm gonna be training weight four times, I'm gonna be walking two to three times per week, I'm gonna be doing intervals once a week, hiking, and golf maybe once a week as well. Activity side of things, steps wise, I've got a Fitbit, I'm pretty much averaging north of about 8,000 steps per day. So regardless of any of these things, that needs to be hit each day for the activity side of things too. And that's a realistic target. Some days I'm up in the 12, 14, even 16,000 steps. But you know what? If I clear 8,000, I'll be happy with that. Any more is just a bonus. And finally, we move on to nutrition. Now, we're going to take a very similar approach to this with regards to exercise, but the first thing we need to do is calculate our calories. Now, the first thing we need to actually look at is what is our goal, what we're looking to achieve? Well, let's say in this particular circumstance, I'm looking to drop body fat. So, the goal is to reduce body fat, okay? So now we've got our goal in mind, how do we want to do that? Do we want to be more aggressive or quite gentle with it? Now, personally, I'm up for being a little bit more aggressive, so I'm thinking, on average, I mean, if we call not aggressive about a pound to pound and a half a week, and then we call aggressive anything north of two pounds, I'm quite happy to do that. So north of two pounds per week is my goal. Perfect. Obviously, I've built up a foundation of muscle, so I want to hold on to that. So I need to make sure that I'm getting adequate protein in my diet. And to do that, we want to target about a gram per pound of body weight. So for me, that's going to be around 185 grams of protein per day is what I need to consume. There or thereabouts, doesn't have to be exactly bang on. So now I have this information, I can then work out my calories. Now the best indication I've got of this one, or the best rule I would say for you guys to do, is to go to a website called iifym.com. Com. They've got a fantastic calculator on there to work out what's called your TDEE, which is your total daily energy expenditure. This is how many calories you use per day in a general basis, factoring in your activity, etc. So you put in all the parameters that we worked out on the page before this. Then that's going to give me out a number. Now that's usually for me, my TDE is going to be around sort of 3,200 calories, something like that. It's going to spit out. For you guys, obviously, it's going to be different. Now, what I'd recommend you do initially is minus about two to 300 from that. So that will bring me out at 2,900 calories. So that is my starting calories. Now, obviously, if I want to be a little bit more aggressive, which I do, I'll probably reduce that by another couple of hundred. So there's 2,700, which is gonna be my aggressive uh, calorie target. However, for you guys, it's entirely up to you. But you've gotta remember, the lower your calories go, the harder your diet is going to be. The higher your calories are, the easier it's going to be. So you've gotta find a trade-off between those two. But make sure you take your TDEE from iifym.com, if it fits your macros.com, take your TDEE minus a couple of hundred calories, and that's personally, if this is your first time doing this, where I would start. Now, what are those calories gonna be made up of? What do I wanna make sure I include in my diet? Now, as you all know from a rant a few months ago, I like pizza, so that's gotta be in there. I've also got quite a sweet tooth, so we need to make sure the chocolate is in there too. Um, I'm a big coffee lover, so we've gotta have coffees in there. I think on top of that, we need to make sure that we have the occasional takeaway. Obviously, that could also be going on the pizza. So, no matter what happens, I need to make sure that I factor those kind of things into my diet. Now, I'm not a huge alcohol drinker, so hence why I haven't included that, but the reason I'm factoring those in is, can I diet without them? Yes. But the problem is, everyone's mindset is that these are foods that put on weight. That's the old school mindset of, oh, if you eat pizza, your body's gonna think a bit differently to eating a salad. If it eats salad, it thinks, oh, brilliant, I'll lose weight because you've eaten a salad, or, oh, I'll gain weight because you've had some pizza or some chocolate. And it doesn't work like that. How it works is your calories. All of this is calculated. What those calories are made up of, as long as you're consuming enough protein per day, in essence, when it comes to changing your body composition, doesn't really matter. 
Obviously, you can hang around with this stuff all day long and fill your diet with this, and yes, you would still lose weight. But the problem with that is you'd feel shit and your health would plummet because you're eating shit food all the time. But to factor these kind of things in every day or every other day or even a little few times a week is absolutely fine. This is the stuff that keeps you adhering. This is the stuff that keeps you on your diet. Because I promise you, if you suddenly get rid of all of these things and suddenly you're left with the boring fucking foods of chicken breast and salad and all this boring shit, I can guarantee you, you're not gonna stick to any of this because you're not having the foods you love and all you're gonna be thinking about is the pizza, the chocolate, etc. And you're gonna be wanting to get back to that and you're gonna be looking forward to the day that you can finally have a pizza again, you can finally have some chocolate again. So my best advice, include it in your diet. As long as you can factor it into this number, that's what matters. And there we have it. That's how we calculate your nutrition. And there we go. That's how you calculate the most optimal and sustainable diet for yourself. You've factored in all the parameters that you actually need to change your body composition, to change your weight, and you've factored in things that are going to keep you adhering to your diet, all led by that initial motivator that made you want to do it in the first place. There is a whole industry built upon meal plans and providing people with these diets to follow. And do they work? Of course they do. But they work because they're adhering to the same principles we outlined there with regards to calories. But with that approach, you can still keep all the foods you enjoy, keep doing the activity you want to do, and it is very much that simple. Don't be fooled into buying meal plans or following someone's diet because you think it's more optimal than doing that. The results, let me tell you, will be the same. As long as you stick to it, as long as you adhere to it and you adhere to your activity, your exercise and your calories, all led by that initial motivator, you will see success. That's how I do it with my clients and that's how I want you guys to do it. Don't be fooled by the bullshit in this industry anymore. That is the most optimal way to find your diet. Hopefully guys, you found this video informative. Do please share it around Facebook and help everybody that you know find an optimal and sustainable diet that they can actually fucking stick to instead of following all this bullshit in the industry just to get themselves to a result by a wedding, etc. Thank you very so much folks and I will see you on the next video. All the best.